Really? Okay. And we're Hello. back. Welcome sorry, back, sorry, we're a bit late, everyone. That yeah. was technical difficulties on our Some side. Miscellaneous technical difficulties. Uh, but we are joined by a very special guest, uh, Wildbo. Do you want to say hey, Wildbo? Do we? Oh, do we lose him? Oh no! Oh, there he is. Sorry. <laughs> Oh. Interesting. Maybe we'll just take it off again and we'll solve the... Okay, yes. perfect. There we go. Cool. Perfect. All right, uh, we're back, folks. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, Wabo, do you want to say hey? I solved some technical uh, snafus. Um, welcome and thank you for coming on the show and yeah. i guess it's worth just saying in in general uh thank you for making pact that allowed us to to take this story that we really loved and and run with it and do some interesting stuff do the yeah. podcast do this live stream uh hold on we might have more technical difficulties apparently your audio is not coming through in the stream oh oh i know i know what that is uh, sorry. sorry that is we uh, just need to We'll set this up. Man, what is the technical difficulties yes. are coming off the chains? Okay, there we go. Um, uh, you guys should be able to hear Wabo yep. now. Sorry about that. That was me. Uh, Wabo, do you maybe just say hi again <laughs> for the third time. Sorry. Hello again. <laughs> um, there we go. Uh, people think we were trolling and that you weren't actually here. We were just <laughs> pretending. <about it. laughs> um, yeah, it's it's been great uh, uh, following along with uh, with all the stories, but especially with Pact and, and doing the show and um, really getting to dive into it. It's been a great time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's been a joy to follow you guys. Uh, you know, I've been following along with Deep Impact and it's, you know, it's been fun. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Perfect. I mean, Thank it, you. you know, the involvement of, of yourself as well as the rest of the Doof community has, yeah. has been absolutely huge for you know, helping drive what Deep Impact is and, and what this live stream has turned into as well. Yeah, totally. Yeah, um, absolutely. So uh, to, to run through for the stream, basically what we can do is we've got Wildbo here. We're going to run through some questions and talk about uh, Pact and uh, how, how Wildbo thinks about Pact and do a bit of an interview about that. Talk about some other miscellaneous stuff about Wildbo's writing and the processes and, and just general things. Um, if you want to support the charity Kids Undercover that we are doing this uh, charity live stream for, you can head to the link that you can see down in the corner of the stream down below, bit.ly forward slash all packed up. Donate some money. It's all going to charity. It's all for a good cause. Um, there's donation incentives. There's milestones. So, um, yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, let's, should we get into it? Yeah. All right. Uh, sure. Yeah. Elliot, do you want to yeah. take it away? Um, so I, I guess the first question we sort of had for you is like, we, we've talked so much about how we've loved the world building impact and just fallen in love with the depth of this world. And we wanted to learn a bit more about like how these ideas coalesce, like where, where did the ideas come from? How long were you sort of putting the pieces of this world together? Well, um, you know, like even the very first story that I wrote, uh, you know, that wasn't for school was a modern supernatural. And, okay. uh, you know, I was a big fan of Buffy, even from uh, season one, mm. I was a big fan of The Crow, and I was a really unhappy 13-year-old. So my very first stories were kind of uh, venting of that unhappiness in a very, very, very dark world. Mm. Okay. So I, uh, I sat down to write, and I wrote 50,000 words of, like, an interconnected story. You know, uh, one uh, storyline where a girl was possessed by a demon growing uh, horns and hooves. Uh, a boy and his girlfriend, you know, got a taste for human flesh and became ghouls. <laughs> oh, and man. Uh, yeah, and then another boy became something like a werewolf with it, the transformations. Mm. And his sister went through the same process. And, you know, the, uh, the pack hierarchy sort of tore his sister away from him. Wow. And so that was like, yeah, and it was terrible. It was awful. <laughs> <laughs> because you, it, uh, of the writing, you're younger or too dark or? Uh, it was just, you know, it was aimless. I was 13 years old. I didn't know yeah. how to write. Um, you know, it was, uh, it was way too edgy. I called it the city of, uh, the city of woe, you know, uh, W O E. Uh, <laughs> yeah. and it was just, it, yeah, it was misery porn. Right. But, you know, um, I went back to it, you know, regularly over the 17 years between when I was 13 and when I wrote, uh, Pact. And pretty much every time I read something that was in that genre, or, you know, watched a horror movie or saw a new season of Buffy or whatever. I was thinking about the things that they were doing, and, you know, cross-checking that against the world I built in my head. 
So, so did these mm-hmm. early sorts of stories, like even way back then, did they include many of the sort of pacty elements that we see in the story today? Not really. Um, I think uh, Lucifer, the comic series by uh, Neil Gaiman yep. and uh, Sam Keith, it marked a big turning point in my head. You know, I, it came out in two thousand or so, but I didn't read it until two thousand five, two thousand six. I read it as one of my you know top three pieces of media overall. It's one of my favorite things. Um, and I think it got me thinking about the cosmology and about the moving pieces of the setting, about obligations and the aspects of, you know, that kind of setting that go back to, or that go back more than a lifetime, you know, uh, yeah. you know, more, more than 10 years. And after thinking of, or after reading that, I think I was no longer writing, you know, the city of woe and I was writing in the past verse instead. Okay. Interesting. Mm. That's, that's so cool. And so like, did you know, did because there's so many great elements of the pact verse, like like you know the the spirits and and all the various rules associated with them. How like like did these ideas all sort of come over time, or was there a moment it just sort of all clicked and came together? Like you know, how how did it all sort of really, I guess, turn into the world that we're familiar with now? Um, I think they sort of fell into place uh, a little bit, you know. Uh you know, after, you know, I read Lucifer, after I started thinking about the big picture and, you know, the, the way, the connective tissue of that world, um, you know, I started, you know, dropping those things in one at a time and, you know, discarding the things that I didn't like. Um, and, you know, uh, I can't even remember when I decided on the no lying thing, but I think it mm-hmm. was, uh, you know, I think it was from like a fantasy novel that I read. You know, I saw somebody doing something like that. And then I decided, you know, like, okay, I want that to be a major part of the story. Mm. So we've talked about how uh, the kind of pact verse evolved over time from from these other influences. Um, when when you coalesced these things into the pact verse, did did you know that you wanted to tell a story like Blake's, or were there other stories that you felt that you wanted to tell in this in this universe instead? Um, you know, it, it's surprising because you know I've remarked in the past that you know I approached Worm having written more than hundred snippets and shorts. And, you know, I was always changing perspectives, exploring ideas, you know, like I'd write a story from Gru's perspective and then from the person that Gru was fighting and, you know, um, you know, just, you know, going all over the place. And I didn't really do that with Pact. You know, uh, Johannes was uh, one perspective I did a couple, a few times. I wrote a few stories from the perspective of a ghost and there's Maggie Holt, you know, of course. Mm. Um, beyond that, you know, I'm sure there's more, but, you know, it's hard to think of anything that really stuck with me. It was always the setting and, you know, making that setting make sense and the connective tissue. Uh, and I think my instinct was more that, you know, I could pick any character and make it interesting as long as the gears and the connective tissue of the setting weren't getting clogged up in the background. Mm, sure. So what made you, what sort of made you go for Blake's story in the end then? I, mm. uh, I, I think it just, you know, uh, I've talked about, you know, my process for pu- pulling a setting together and it's often waiting for that click waiting for that, you know, just something that, you know, you know, hit, hits me in the shower or, you know, when I'm lying, lying in bed at night, uh, that, you know, makes me think, you know, I can make this a character. And I don't, I don't, I'm afraid I don't remember what the click was for Blake and Rose, mm. but I came up with, the, I came up with their story in the same week that I wrote the sample chapters for Pact, um, you know, oh. at the end of, you know, post worm. And then I just went from there. And I think, you know, going back to what I said before, my instincts were that, you know, with the setting being what it was, I could just pick two characters, a basic, basic concept, and just go from there. Mm. I think, mm. you know, instincts were mostly right. So has yeah. that held held true going forward for, for other stories? Is that something that you feel like consists of, if you find a world that you can explore for something like a twig, or I guess Ward is similar to parahumans in that sense, um, do you just feel like, yes, I can find an interesting character in this world and tell an interesting story? I think if the setting is strong enough and if I do have that click, you know, just that one, you know, character concept that, you know, I feel like, okay, I can take this somewhere. Mm. Or there are themes that I can build from here. Um, I can do that, you know. And I think I did find that with the Lambs. And again, it, that was pretty close to the end of uh, Pact where I decided on it and then just went with it. Mm. Interesting. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, maybe, Elliot, while you take a look for the next question, I'm going to go through some of our donations because we've been hit by a a real swarm of donations since we kicked <laughs> off. Um, we have a, t- a $10 donation from Manolion. Thank you, Manolion. We've got a $10 donation from Arenicus, uh, who says, if you reach the barbering, does that mean Elliot has to shave Ruben's beard? Uh, we'll see. 
we have a $50 donation from I Eat All The Peanuts, thank you, who says, Mrs. Lewis fan art, if you haven't drawn her yet, so we'll get to that a little bit later. Um, we have a $10 donation from Scavenger5882. Uh, uh, we have a $23.34 donation from Fundafulness, thank you, Fundafulness. DDev has given us a $10 donation and wants us to add to the Forsworn drink, so we'll get to that. Uh, we have a $5 donation from a bird on a motorcycle who says, don't forget to donate uh, to everyone else, I suppose. We have another $20 donation from Irenicus who wants us to drink from the Forsworn drink, which we'll get to in a moment. Uh, a $50 donation from BakerJake56 who says, huge thanks to the Deep Impact team and to Willy Beast and to the Doof crew. Um, and a $50 donation from Kipos who says, Bo Hype Time, welcome to the stream, Mr. Bo. Super excited to have you here. Me too. Um, so thanks yeah. everybody Thank for you, your everyone. donations. Um, should we uh, yeah. continue on? Uh, yeah. So I guess to sort of follow on what we were, what, where we were before, um, what sort of what sort of goals or aims, I guess, do you, did you maybe have going into Pact? Like, I guess you know, was there was there anything specific you were setting out to achieve? Um, you know, the big thing was that I just finished Gloom. Yep. You know, the story was a hit, and you know, to put that into context, you know, I had no expectations going in. And then the readership doubled and then doubled again in the past two months of me writing the story. And then, you know, so above all else, you know, I wanted to write something, anything that wasn't Worm and prove to myself that the success wasn't a fluke and that right. I could write something that wasn't that. Um, and then you have the, the uh, you know, the fact that the perspective of Worm was Taylor's is very close to how I think. And when I did the sample chapters to trial uh, story ideas with my audience, you know, I, I, I I had to stumble with Boyle because it got too close to having another Taylor as a main character. Um, so when I wrote Blake, a big goal of mine was uh, to make him distinct. And, uh, you know, as early in the stream, you mentioned that each character is sort of a response to uh, the character before them. Mm -hmm. um, but they're also, uh, they're sort of, you know, me from different time periods. You know, so Taylor is uh, me in high school. And Blake was me right after high school when I was trying to find my feet as a young adult. And then you've got, you know, Cy, uh, as me as a child, I was very much a charlatan and a liar. <laughs> uh, I, I, I was a storyteller without an outlet, without uh, an outlet or creative, you know, mm. creative venue. Um, and then Victoria was me, you know, late university, struggling with anxiety, you know. So I just wanted to find his voice. And, uh, you know, that was like, a big thing. I, I think I did okay. Yeah, mm. definitely. I see it as a really interesting way for some like self reflection and some examination of, of traits that you've exhibited throughout your life is taking that voice and really diving into it and thinking, well, what's the extension of the way of this way of thinking as an interesting way of um of growth. I think that's I think that's fascinating. Yeah, it's uh you know, if I'm gonna have to spend, you know, a year, two years, three years in the heads of uh or in the head of main character. You know, I should be able to relate to it or, you know, not have to stretch my, stretch myself too far to make that happen, I think. Mm, yeah. So happy to that. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, so I guess talking about that that sort of, you know, coming off of the success of Worm, it, I believe it wasn't that long into writing Pact that you switched to writing full-time. Um, and I'd be yep. interested to sort of hear, like, how, how that changed the way you were going about things? Oof. Um, you know, those were tough times, you know, uh, financially, you know, it was mostly okay. You know, I made the move to Patreon and there was a lot of month to month consistency and that can't be understated. But in terms of like everything else, you know, trying to make that transition was kind of hell. Um, you mentioned early in stream that, you know, you sort of wanted to dive into the thought process and the, uh, you know, the mentality surrounding uh, Pact. And, you know, where I was in life, I guess, then, and how it impacted the story. Um, yeah. That's where, you know, like, I... Oh, sorry, oh, I was just going to say, ahead. yeah, there were there were a lot of uh, comments by you in under a lot of the chapters that sort of were, were talking about, you know, that you were having a rough time. Um, and so, mm -hmm. yeah, I guess, I guess that was just sort of something that we wanted to sort of, I guess, dive into a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so it's like, uh, at that point in time, you know, I needed to move. I didn't have the time to sort it out. And then uh, three quarters of my family maybe weren't uh, so supportive of the writing. 
uh, one told me that I didn't I didn't deserve to get lucky and find any success, and they hoped that I fail. Oof, and geez. then, uh, you know, yeah, and then I had like a family member in and out of the hospital, going to the emergency room. I was making trips every weekend to uh, to help where I could uh, help where I could with the uh, preparing for my brother's upcoming wedding, and you know that put me in close constant proximity to some of the same people who weren't backing me up. And like, even just months after the comment that I just mentioned, you know, so I was, uh, you know, I was taking weekend trips and helping with the wedding, figuring out my fin- finances and struggling with family issues while I was writing, you know, like 12,000 to 18,000 words every week. Yeah. Um, you know, so I don't, I don't think I could have avoided making the move to full time, but it was a factor in the shape that uh, Pac took. Um, you know, like, it's like uh, when I'm uh, feeling sick or tired, uh you know and the writing is going going to feel less crisp i have a habit of putting my characters into situations where they're delirious or they're shaking or they're injured you know and that way the uh, the writing reflects you know their mentality a little bit and by the same measure you know i think i channel the the desperation i guess you know the franticness of what i was doing into blake's situation you know yeah just to yeah yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess that's fascinating. So, like, I guess, do you think that sort of affected the story? Like, was, was packed maybe not m- not originally something you pictured as being as crazy as it ended up being? Or even as, as bleak and maybe, Not at all. Yeah. Um, yeah, not nearly as much as it was. Um, but, you know, once it started to fall down that way, I was sort of stuck on that road. It would have been hard to, you know, go from fast-paced and frantic and, you know, just one thing happening after another to uh, making the leap to, you know, or sorry, making the shift to something slower and more, you know, drawn out or with breathing room, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I find it really interesting because we've talked about, uh, and I, I guess I'm curious whether you agree with this or not, but the idea of Pact being one of your most optimistic stories or having at least some really strong optimism uh, throughout the story, even as it is quite bleak, we get to this kind of pe- place of peace towards the ending. And potentially I can see the influence of, you know, if you're going through a difficult time personally, taking solace in a story that, you know, where a character that you relate to is also going through a difficult time, but is able to work hard and, and find their way to, yeah, this place of peace and contentment at the end as well. It's kind of interesting because, you know, like the end of Pact... At, at that point, I had moved out. I moved, like, an hour away from everybody. Like, that was sort of, you know, a little bit toxic, a little bit unsupportive. Mm. Um, so maybe that was, like, again, my mentality sort of being reflected in the story. And if I hadn't made that move, maybe it would have been a darker ending. Who knows? Interesting. Mm. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, and so I guess, yeah, obviously now, you know, this is this is five years ago now. You, you've, you've still been doing this. You've had, like, Twig that, that was a success as well. And, um, like, obviously Ward is doing fantastically. So, like, I guess, you know, how how different are things now and, and maybe how have your feelings towards Pact evolved in those last five years? My feelings on Pact um, very much improved, I think. Uh, immediate, immediately after, I was pretty bitter. You know, Worm and the superhero setting was always something I thought was cool. But, you know, given my background, you know, what I talked about with, like, how I got started, I think Modern Supernatural was something that I loved. And, you know, rather than thinking it was cool. So, you know, it's like you get into a relationship with a girl you've had a crush on for 17 years. But then, Mm -hmm. you know, life is sort of kicking you in the ass to the point where you don't get the chance to be your best self with her. And then the relationship ends. And, you know, isn't that kind of frustrating? It's like, damn. Yeah. It would be nice to spend more time with her, to spend more time packed to not be so frantic or desperate for the majority of the time I was with it. And that's sort of where the bitterness and I think the frustration and what you talked about uh, earlier in the stream about, you know, where, like, my my end of Pact, or what was a uh, Pact Seal. Pact, pact Seal, yeah. Seal post. Uh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, you know, and I turned around on that. You know, it's, it's definitely a story where I can go back and check a detail and I get sucked into reading two arcs. And the bitterness isn't as fresh, and I'm, you know, I'm just happy with that I did manage to achieve, and I'm happy with the world. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, like obviously, we we still think it's a fantastic story, <laughs> and especially considering <laughs> yeah. like the the hardships you were going through, like you, you, yeah, you definitely do deserve to be proud of it. Yeah, it's uh, 
Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I guess that's something that I think we were going to touch on with some of these questions as well is, is thinking about, you know, it's been five years now since the final chapter was published and obviously your uh, love for the world has, has uh, rekindled or not been as bitter as you mentioned. We, you've been diving back into things with something like Poke, for example. Um, I, I'm interested to, we, we'll dive into some questions, I think, about how your relationship and thoughts about the world of Pact have changed over these five years and, and what that evolution has looked like. Um, um oh go ahead yeah do you want to oh no 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 yeah well i i, I guess uh, that's the question to start with um <laughs> how has your relationship with the world of pack changed over these five years i mean what do you how, how have your feelings changed uh, on it um you know uh hmm. i didn't tell i didn't write any notes for this answer so uh let me think that's okay um, maybe we can come to a different question if you want, and we can uh, come circle back to it uh, if you'd like. Sure, sure. Um, so something something else I wanted to talk about um, was something we we really noticed in Pact was that you were constantly setting yourself so many challenges just with the nature of this world. Like there was the the inability to lie. Then there were things like the rule of three, mm. Blake and Rose's dynamic, as as we learn more about it. Like there's so many layers upon layers upon layers of, of things that you have to consider when when you're just reading it let alone writing it and I, i'm just curious how you did this <laughs> how, how you how you managed it basically you know it's uh i'm kind of surprised but you know it's a lot easier than you would think you know it wasn't like i i, I uh, extensively practiced it you know i didn't have the systems or the uh you know the rule three as something I'd spent 17 years with. But, uh, you know, uh, I think I only messed up twice with the lying thing. And there was only one promise to one, uh, I guess, oath that uh, Blake didn't keep. And that was the promise to the little behame girl. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. uh, I think it's, uh, it's, it's the fact that, you know, when you're spending the, the kind of uh, time with the story that, you know, I spent, it's uh, it's all in the you know the uh, the RAM you know it's all it was like uh, method acting you know if you never stop and you never put put it down you're constantly in the mode of the mindset with the stuff and the story elements to second nature you know and it's it's all like within arms of each. That's interesting. So so you're getting like just I I guess immersed even outside the writing in in the world basically. Well, it, you know. Uh, it's part of the uh, the daily process, you know. On sure. days I write, you know, I'm I'm constantly, uh, you know, I'm just I'm thinking about the story all day. And on days I don't write, I'm thinking about what I'm writing next. So it's always just sort of in my head, mm. you know, whatever I'm doing. All right. Okay. Oh man, that's so mm. impressive. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it kind of it can occupy your headspace, and you let yourself have the the downtime or the moments where you're not actively working on it to have the ideas kind of bubbling in your head i suppose yeah 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 i mean everything i do and every person i talk to um every article i read is sort of always like being cross-checked against you know settings i have in my head and, mm. you know so yeah it feels like a lot of um of balls to kind of keep juggling in the air i suppose um because obviously it doesn't just one setting that you could uh, come to there's there's multiple things at a time that that might be percolating in in your head yeah, yeah, and just like even conversations between characters, or yeah, you know, uh, you know, scenes that might happen, and you know, if it is not at all relevant to Pact, maybe it's applying to a future story that I'm writing. You know, <laughs> um, I heard an anecdote from one writer who, uh, you know, he was at a party and you know, staring off into space, and his wife nudged him and was like, you know, you need to stop writing, you know, because <laughs> you know he was in that mindset where he was just constantly, you know working through stuff in his head even when he wasn't at a keyboard typing mm. and it's the same for me mm. interesting interesting um yeah i i guess as a as a question that maybe plays off of that is i'm i'm interested to hear about you know as someone who is uh kind of audience funded and and has potentially a different work situation to most who would go and work a job and then go home and, and do something else um do you find it hard to to set aside time for okay this is my time to do this thing when i'm not specifically thinking about writing uh you know 
back when I was a kid, you know, I mentioned that I was, you know, I was a creative kid with no outlet, so I became mm. a liar. You know, um, I think just the fact that, you know, the imagination overflows is always there. You know, there's no time where, you know, I'm not thinking in some kind of creative aspect. That just, you know, who I, who I am. And, you know, it makes me useless for a lot of things. But, you know, it's, mm. it's okay for the writing. <laughs> it seems to be uh, working out for the writing, I suppose. <laughs> Yeah, I, I guess I, I'm I'm interested uh, jumping I guess a, a bit back into the the world of Pact. Like, what what would be your favorite aspect mm. of, of the world? Um, because the, yeah, you know, we touched on there's so much there. You know, um, you know, the short answer is the abyss. Yeah. You no. Know, um, yeah. when, when I think of favorite characters, it's you know, you know, it's always the uh, you know the bogeyman constantly come up. Yeah. Um. And it's you know that's probably pretty obvious from how Blake went there. You know, three major times. <laughs> you know, it appeals to my instincts. I think as a writer and a world builder. You know, I like that. You know, I like characters who have that one moment of negativity, and then they you know they make they de- they develop from there. Mm. Well, yeah. I mean that's reflected in in Worm through things like trigger events as well, right? A core kind of absolutely defining moment that that causes growth. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And then I guess uh, goblins are kind of a runner-up. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, the goblin. Yeah, there's something. Uh, there's, they're very fun. The yeah. goblins. Yeah, yeah. There's something great about you know giving myself the excuse to be completely utterly immature, but also to just you know break from convention, break from you know you know like to throw you know to show penis in you know a quiet <laughs> church. Well, I, you know? this is something that I find interesting about uh, the people's general discussions about your work while Bo is a lot of people talk about okay he's he's got a lot of strength in character he's got a lot of strength in building really cohesive interesting worlds um and and those obviously are both true but I think something that isn't mentioned as much is just the kind of general humor that is seeded throughout all of your work even in something like Pact which for most of it is quite a bleak work almost always there are these laugh out loud lines to interspersed between these kind of moments of pitch black like depressing intense uh heavy uh, moments um and i think it doesn't get enough recognition the, the parts like this that really balance out the the more uh, high level or dark kind of moments that i think you're more uh, immediately known for uh i appreciate that you know um i'm glad i think the dark moments you know allow the humor to shine through more yes exactly you know um yeah you know i don't have i started out with zero confidence in comedy and in romance um, I think those are two things in, you know, writing or media that are very hard to sell because it's so subjective. Mm. You know? um, but I think by having that, just that intense darkness, you know, anybody's going to be relieved to have, you know, that light shining through or, you know, the the scream of penis, mm. you know? <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, that prompts an interesting question for me as well, which is you touched on the things that you were potentially worried about writing, which are humor and romance. I think you've explored humor quite a lot in your works and will continue to do so. And there's been some exploration of romance. I know there's some stuff in Twig there. There's obviously some uh, things with, uh, for example, Victoria's way that she deals with potential relationships and the kind of uh, snare of potential dangers there for her. Uh, Is that something that you see yourself wanting to focus on more, trying to dive more into this relationship aspect of the human psyche? Um, yes, you know, I, you know, even though I'm, you know, a, you know, pretty straightforward guy, I, I do like romance works, mm. and there's a few that I, fo- I followed in the past, um, like not romance books, but, you know, romance manga, mm. some TV series. Yep. Um, yeah, um, I would like to explore that, but I think my big issue is that, you know, I think with, you know, horror and romance you tend to have a lot of convention mm. and what i tend to like about a work is you know finding that convention and then you know thinking okay how can this be overturned what <laughs> new avenues can be explored yes and i i i feel like i can do that with horror and with uh you know uh you know with superhero works mm. you know that's another a very conventional setting with romance it's harder you know and i think with poke a little bit yep. i explored you know mm. other avenues yes. But I feel like I would want to have, you know, something I could do that I didn't feel like had been done before. And I'm not sure how I would go about that. Hmm. So something so short, like, I guess, 
short answer is yes, I would love to do it, but I would have to figure it out. And mm -hmm. I haven't done that yet. Mm. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Um, uh, I guess, uh, you know, an another one we sort of had on, on a slightly bit of a tangent, but like, who was your favorite other that you, <laughs> that you got to design for Pact? I'm just so curious to, to learn a bit more about, I guess, maybe the process behind these others and what made like one in or, or whatever particularly click to you. Okay. Uh, you know, I think it's Midge. Mm. Yeah. You know, uh, in terms of how she ties into the world, uh, what she is, what she wants, and then you got the personality and the distinctive appearance, she feels just very fleshed out. Um, and just by being there, you know, she implies a lot more about the world and how it works. You know, you tie into the, uh, you know, the subhumans or you know, the offspring. Uh, you know, you tie into the abyss and you see another aspect of the abyss. And you know, she's very. Very simple in execution, but she does a lot, and I like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm. I think it's an interesting, uh, an interesting kind of challenge, right? Um, of taking a character who is kind of thinks in a different way, and not necessarily even thinks in a different way, but is is on a level that is like not somewhere between the line of animalistic and human uh, and a specific challenge of finding a way to write in a in a convincing style for a character who is not necessarily at a like fully human level of, of thought processes and still making that captivating and convincing that's something that i absolutely love about uh for example midge's interlude um hearing yeah. her thought process of and how simplistic it is but how kind of relatable it is on a human level despite that yeah, you know, that, that interlude is one of my favorites, you know, um, I, just, I like how it comes through. I like how it, you know, it feels like a, uh, a horror movie or just a snippet from one, mm. uh, but it also fits into the world. You know? Yes, it definitely gives kind of uh, the Hills Have Eyes vibes. Mm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, um, maybe I'll, I'll, we've got a bunch of donations, so uh, I'll go through those while we're sure. uh, prepping the next suite of questions. Um we have a hundred dollar donation from Enamored, uh, who is going to uh, pay, potentially pick a pilot season topic later. We have a two hundred dollar donation. I think that's our biggest donation of the yeah. stream. Uh, thank you, Sir Dan KK, who just says drink up, nerds. So here's the false one drink, Ellie. I'll yeah. have some of that we'll in a bit. We'll get to that. We have a twenty dollar donation from Macarena of Time. Thank you, Macarena. Uh, we have a fifty dollar donation of Kyrgyzstan, who's requesting some Isadora fan art. So we will get to that shortly. Kyrgyzstan, thank you for that fifty dollar donation. Um, we have a $10 donation from Pact uh, Pactical. Thank you, Pactical. We have a $10 donation from Meta Myriad. Thank you, Meta Myriad. We have a $20 donation from Ev, who says, Love the podcast, and can I get a tarot reading right-handed? Yes, Ev, we will get to you. We've got a suite of tarot readings to, uh, to put together. Uh, Emma says, uh, $20 donation, and says, Take that, you worm. Thank you, Emma. Uh, good meme. Um, we have a $50 donation from Altain, who says, Thanks, Elliot, Ruben, and Wabo. Fan art of Best Bird slash Boy Evan, please. We'll get to that uh, soon. And we have a $20 donation from Alessandro, who says, Just want to say thanks to you guys and Wabo for the wonderful time. Oh, I think one oh, more actually, just we came just through. got one more just then, right on time. Uh, Serene's a $5 donation says, Thank you guys for doing it. I love all of Wabo works and all the fans. Um, cool. Uh, Shall we continue on? Yeah, yeah. Um, I I guess so. Something, and I guess we have sort of touched on this a bit already. But um, how how has maybe your writing process changed since Worm slash, or maybe even Packed? Like, uh, you know, are there differences now between how you approach it than there were five years ago? Uh, that's tricky. You know, um, a lot's changed, but for me, uh, process is something that I've held to pretty firmly. You know it you know the general schedule the general schedule of you know intense fits of writing not really going back to edit uh just working to get those two two chapters out every week minimum you know um you know i if the changes are minor like my schedule has slipped slipped a little bit i'm still sticking to the days but the chapters come out late in the day um you know that was just me hitting a point uh lifestyle wise where i decided it was better to be late and not go you know one or two nights a week without sleeping at all, you know, pulling all nighters, which you guys have done. <laughs> yeah. <you know? laughs> yeah. It's uh, a, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mixed bag for sure. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, yeah, well, so I guess, um, were there any smaller characters in Pact that you really enjoyed writing? I, I, I guess Midge is presumably one of those, but, um, you know, I think a, a question you've asked of people in the past yourself has been, like, which character would be in your top 10 that you don't think would be in many others' top 10? Um, well, I mean, well, this is definitely in people's top 10 as the poll showed, but, uh, you know, like Evan is small, the smallest character and most enjoyable. <laughs> um, you know, yeah. Um, what I like about a character is, you know, when I can, they come off this, like the, uh, you know, spur of the moment thinking, you know, uh, I don't even plan for them to be in the story. Um, and for Evan, you know, that was, you know, one character, um, you know, I didn't plan for him to be in Pact, but he just oh. sort of happened and really worked. Um, cool. You know, you got Midge, who I mentioned before. Yep. Um, you've got uh, Peter Thorburn, but I think again, those are guys, you know, in the top, uh, you know, top ten. Um, I feel like uh, the Diary Girl, somebody who could, you know, have a story told about her or written around her. Mm. Um, and then you got like Kathy Thorburn. You know, yeah. and she didn't do very well in the polls. Uh, when was it Meg's Madness? Yeah, uh, but like with her, you've got you know like a trunchbull style, you know, bear of a woman, <laughs> yes. with her own, you know, you know, dreams and drive, and you know, she makes a good stand-in for you know second second string Thorburns. Mm. I like that she had her own voice and personality and background, and you know, she worked, and you know, she got fan art made of her. That's great. Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Um. We're we're out of we we haven't got any more donations earlier, so feel free okay. to continue on. Um, I don't know, maybe maybe we're we're diving into a bit more of the just very packed specific <laughs> that's types right. of questions now. It's deep um, in packed, that's what we're here for. <laughs> deep into packed. Um But we just we just had some sort of ones like uh, you know, what 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 do you think your implement might be? My implement, uh you know, I was thinking like a little jar of black ink. You know, decorated maybe to look like a human head to reflect uh, the muse Mel Um, You know, she's the muse of tragedy, and I think that mm. fits. Yep. Um, and she carries a human head, and then <laughs> maybe like a bone. Uh, if I can get away with it, a bone fountain pen to go with it. And you know, uh, I like the idea of you know like reaching into the chair of ink and like smearing the ink around, which having that be like an endless well. Uh, I think it would fit me. So, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, and and I guess uh, to to sort of tie into that, like, do you do you have an impression of what type of practice you you would try to choose to engage with if if you had to choose one? <laughs> that that's tricky because you know I'm a bit of a hermit, and I think most or all of the practices are about you know interaction or dealing with other people or dealing with others, and that's not so much me. You know that would make me really miserable. Um, but I think, you know, maybe working one of the, uh, incarnate practices would be more interesting. You know, that's where you got stuff like luck magic or death magic or time magic. You're dealing with stuff like, uh, conquest, but, you know, I'd rather deal with the small guy. Yeah. yeah um, less risky. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think, I think there's an element where you know exactly what to bet when you're dealing with them as, um, and you're turning your attention to the outside world, you know, like or when you're turning your attention to the outside world, you're making that world make more sense. You're making bits of the schema. And there's a power to that and a simplicity to that that's, you know, appealing. Yeah. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, well, I guess I, I, I kind of uh, have a question that I want to dive into a bit, which is before, uh, Walbo, you mentioned uh, that you really loved finding these characters that you didn't have planned out originally. So I think Evan is a great example of that. And it kind of makes me curious how... Um, how many of the themes of, of Pact you do have planned out in advance and, and how, how, how much you do kind of come to them as you go? Because a character like Evan, to me, is so integral to the story of, you know, finding a way for Blake to regain his humanity and regain his, not necessarily his innocence, but his, like, hope, I suppose, um, or maintain it, maybe is a better word. Um, I, I'm curious whether that was a, something that you had planned out beforehand or if, is that something that came throughout the story and Evan was a good conduit for that. I, I'm, I'm interested to see, to hear how that kind of evolves. Um, that's, you know, that's pretty abstract writing process. That's hard, hard to really conceptualize. Um, sure. 
you know, yeah, um, let me think. Uh, you know, with Pact, the big, you know, milestones, the big points that I was trying to hit were, you know, like, I, I think I knew that Blake was going to go to the Abyss. And that was a big, you know, key point. Uh, I knew Mags is silly. Um, they were very, like, reliable points that, you know, I could uh, sort of write towards, you know, I could, you know, lead into, you know, Blake, you know, Blake is going to die. You're going to leave this role, and that could be a thing. Um, I sort of knew, you know, how it would end. You know, it would be Johans, and it would be uh, Basil in the war. Mm. Um, yeah, but beyond that, you know, it was just, you know, writing off the cuff and then just seeing Stilly evolve. And I, I like the twists and turns as much as my readers do. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Interesting. And I guess that makes it a, a more a kind of authentic voice as you find your way to these twists and turns if they're ones that you get to explore and enjoy as they're percolating in your brain in much the same way that readers would. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, I think the drawback is that, you know, uh, when real life gets in the way and it did with Pact, I sort of default to, you know, what's, what I've been doing recently that worked for me. Mm. And, you know, uh, I think even launching into Pact, you know, I was in the mindset still of where Taylor was at the end of Worm. And it was all escalation. It was, you know, conflict. It was intensity. And that was, like, Blake's starting point, And that was a lot. Um, and, you know, so, like, when I'm too busy to think or to plan or to shift modes, I just I sort of go back to the escalation, that intensity. Um, so that's sort of the drawback of, you know, writing off the cuff and letting it evolve like that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that, that's cool. Got pros and cons, I suppose. So, but you know, I, I'm sure every uh, method of doing this kind of stuff has its own pros and cons to come along with it. For sure. Yep. Yeah. Um. So maybe maybe just sort of one one last one, mm -hmm. um, that we wanted to sort of touch on was, do do you feel a desire to create, um, for other media formats? I guess you know, outside of the, the written word? I have actually uh, a bit of a twist on that as well, which is I've noticed that you've been doing more and more art to explore the kind of visualizations of your characters. I'm not sure if this is just a recent thing or I've just started seeing it more and more recently. I'm interested if you, you know, for the other media formats that you do kind of create for or that you do think about creating for, how much that feeds into your process for writing as well. Mm, um you know okay that, that's pretty layered uh <laughs> yeah sure yeah that's fair enough so uh so to answer the first question you know i would love to make a video at some point you know um a lot of the time if i'm winding down i'm either playing video games i'm watching a show i'm writing something that isn't my current project or i'm you know i'm conceptualizing video games mm. and as part of the conceptualizing i've been doing some art i've been doing some icons i've been you know i broke down the wormverse into you know codified rules for you know uh, how classifications and how powers might uh, evolve. And then that sort of formed a backbone and a little bit of a, you know, a way to quickly roll some dice and figure out, you know, you know what powers am I going to, you know, throw into Ward, mm. you know? Um, and I think it's layered like that, you know, uh, if I'm pulling something off the cuff, you know, it can be, you know, like uh, with Ransack in uh, the Traveler's Arc back in Worm, it was, you know, that was a game that I had conceptualized and it was, you know, I had a richer, fuller idea of how, how that game would work and, you know, what classes would be in it. Um, so, you know, I would like to make a game at some point, mm. but I don't think I could do it while I was actually, you know, writing serials. So it's sort of, you know, almost a backup plan or a post-retirement -retire plan, you mm. know, that I would like to go into making games. Mm. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, I think. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess we'll we'll start to wrap up. We're gonna run out of time for uh, for our segment here. Um, but I guess just in general, again, thanks for coming on the stream, Wild Bo. Uh, you've led to I think the highest batch of donations here, so it's really <laughs> helped uh, raise money for the charity, oh, which we really appreciate, and of course, really appreciate you in general. So um, yeah. again, thanks for all of this. I'm really glad. You know, uh, yeah, pretty. I was pretty nervous going into this, but you know, I thought the charity was great thing mm. so you know i'm glad to support it and to spur those donations on yeah yeah so thank you great. beautiful um any final questions elliot no i mean i just opened the floor to to wild i guess you know is there anything yeah. else you you wanted to touch on or, or to say uh 
Not much. I, uh, you know, wish, I wish you guys the best of luck, you know, in your final, what, three hours now? Uh, yeah, three, yeah. And a, three and a half hours. Three and a half hours. We're down to, yeah. yeah. Well, good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. Uh, well, perfect. We'll, uh, we're going to go to a quick break for the stream um, and we'll be back shortly with our next segment, which I'm looking at the run sheet. Oh, we're doing Pact the Musical. So we're going to plan out what <laughs> might a musical version of Pact look like. <laughs> so stick around for that. Uh, pop some donations in the uh, from the donor link and we'll see you all soon. Yes, and yeah, thank, thanks again, Wobbo. And uh, we'll be eagerly awaiting, you know, the whatever comes in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, take care. Yes. Thanks. Perfect. You too. And we'll be back in a moment, folks.